Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back for match two of First Departure up against Titan in the Joint Dota League Season 3 Asia Premier Division. Um, we just saw First Departure pull off a fairly decisive but statistically unexpected win against Titan. Um, and we've just entered into the uh, the second draft now. So we've had Death Prophet Band, Razor Band, Lycan Band, Void Band, and an Aegis Prophet Pickup. Um, I'm joined again by Metamorphosis, and because he's going to leave soon, I'm going to let him do most of the talking for the draft, I think. Hello. Oh, oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, First Departure and Titan, very, very quick bands, and they're effectively identical to the bands that they had in the first game. Death Prophet, Razor, Lycan, Void. Um, so we'll see how, and you know, First Departure pick up that Quick Nature's Profit. It gives them that flexibility that we saw in the last match. So I was wondering, ah, what do you think of this, Grumble? Hmm. I mean, I think First Departure are playing on the fact that this, this new breed of Nature's Profit hasn't been seen too much and is still quite unfamiliar to a lot of teams, and it really punishes any attempt at hard farming. Um, which makes me a little leery of the Ember Spirit pick up mid, but Ember's a, Ember's a good farmer, he should be fine, plus a ton of escapes. I think um, Ember gives them the late game guarantee, but what's interesting about what Titan did is they picked up the Shadow Shaman as a second pick. Mm. And they're not going to give First Departure any more pushing power. Mm. And that was really, really smart of them, because the wards will help massively, only if you can level Shadow Shaman quickly enough. So to be able to be effective, because if you don't manage to do that this game, the Nature's Prophet will run over him very, very quickly, mm. and that's going to be a big, big key thing. Is that you want to hit those right levels at the right time so you can counter those pushes? Because if you don't mm. manage to do that, it's going to be incredibly problematic. Well, I think what I'm seeing here is it's the it's the fact that Titan to me can be aggressive or defensive. They can go for ganks if they've got space. They can drop the wards on towers and try and get pushes down. But they can also be defensive. You can use Shadow Shaman Wolves defensively, and if they're farming that Ember Spirit the whole time, especially against a Nature's Prophet, where you get all those extra cleave hits off the Treants, they will they'll win late game, I think. Um, yeah. But here is, here is but the first departure kind of have to be aggressive. You can't have a Nature's Prophet and a Brewmaster and not be diving under towers, and not be pushing. So they're certainly good at that dive, but I'm wondering whether Titan are going to be able to maybe anticipate it a little bit more now, and hopefully be able to respond to it. Yeah, and I think Titan picked up their late game guarantee in the Ember Spirit, but the mm. question in this game is not the late game guarantee. It's a question of what are you going to do early in mid game against mm -hmm. Nature's Prophet and the crew, and that's what they need to be drafting at the moment. They need to full protect one, or be able to create that space so that their Ember can farm accordingly and can get his key items that enable him to kill people, basically. Um, and, you know, I'm just wondering what are they going to draft to do that? I think the bands coming out from First Departure are very, very strong. Viper and Tide would both have been amazing candidates to do exactly what you're saying. Give them a bit of mid-presence, give them just something to put a bit of caution to the Nature's Prophet. I'm a little bit struggling more with, with Titan's band. Okay, Rubik very, very strong, fine, but Skyroth Mage to me is a natural brew counter. I appreciate he can absolutely wreck Shadow Shaman during Shackles or he can he or, can also stop the ember from or the ember I suppose yeah out. but so okay so fair enough but they need to get something then to to try and hold out that brewmaster and yeah. Skyroth could have done it fair enough they want to ban it out instead just, but they had the first pick and they need something against brew I w I would have preferred it if they had banned something else there and then picked up the Skyroth I think the Skyroth shadow shaming combo apart from anything else is ridiculously powerful. Ah, one of my favorite heroes, um, Disruptor. This is great, because Titan are, are going not only for the sense of push and disable that they get from Shadow Shaman, but they're going a sense of AoE control when they're getting pushed in, because the Disruptor Static Field is amazing, Static Storm and Static Field. Mm -hmm. they're, they're amazing at controlling an area within a team fight, because once you're inside the Static Storm, you silence, and this obviously you have a BKB. But hmm. and I mean, it's it's great for them. It's great for them if they can catch people in it. I completely agree. I'm just wondering whether. Okay, so Brewmaster's not going to be in the fight. He's going to blink in an ult, and you really need to try and catch him in that before he ults. But it will be amazing for chasing. You know, for for glimpse into static field, maybe drop an ult if it's the Brewmaster. Um, yeah. But I'm not yeah. sure. 
and it, and it'll be great for defense as well. Like I think they've picked great heroes to hold their high ground. Basically, they can even if they lose external towers. Um, you know, if if they could, they've got the threat of static fields. Yeah, for coming up the high ground. That's right huge. There. If you try to push in on us, we can control an area of that team fight. We can scatter you the way that we want to, and we can pick off one or two of you while that is happening. Mm -hmm. But the big issue with Shadow Shaman and Disruptor is they fall onto the category of we're incredibly squishy supports. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any right click. I mean, you know, Shadow Shaman might have some with the shock, um, Ether Shock. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Disruptor has nothing and he can get burst down really, really quickly if he's not careful. But Titan, uh, and, you know, I love the I love Disruptor. I also love, love Bristleback. Mm. And you have a great tank in Bristleback. And that should work to their advantage. Having said that, first departure did draft a Bane. I so, love that pickup. I think that is know, such a smart pickup for them. Yeah, and, you know, you can Nightmare the Bristleback or you can ult the Bristleback. And effectively, he loses a lot of his... Because the whole point of Bristleback is just you walk around and you crawl spray everything. And then if people are attacking you, you run back because you're getting so much less damage. Oh, and they pick up the Veno as well. That gives them even more push. This is going to be a bloody game. First half an hour of this game, there are going to be 30 kills on the board. 40 kills and 50 kills. I don't even know. It's going to be huge. <laughs> um, well, first departure, really have to push to win. And Titan are great at stopping that. And they're great at pushing in return. But first departure are great at stopping that as well. Um, I mean, I just love that Bane because it's Nightmare Bristle, Fiend's Grip, Ember Spirit. That's the way I see their team fights going. And if they've got anything really to hold up the Shadow Shaman and the Disruptor, um, you know, say Brewmaster initiates. And not only that, but the Venomancer with with the poison, the slow. I mean, Shadow Shaman needs to get in range of the Bane to be able to cancel his ult. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're being hit by Venomancer, any of Venomancer's ability, including the Playboys, he's so slow, mm -hmm. he can't get there. And, and they've got yeah, so much magic nuke as well, like that poor Bristleback. Yeah. All the damage he's um, going to be taking is magical. A, a big, big thing is how quickly can the Bristleback get either his Vanguard or his Hood. Because once he gets those items, he'll be a lot more durable in these team fights. He'll be able to kind of capitalize on the situation around him. But if he doesn't get the Vanguard or that Hood early on, then first departure are just going to push towers. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And an invoker pick up for the mid. So I think we're probably seeing a position two, two Ember Spirit. Sorry, a position one Ember Spirit. I like that. I don't see it too often, but I like it. And there, uh, and Ursa picked up for first departure. Did I say this was going to be a bloody game? Did I say yeah. there were going to be 50 kills? Make that you know, 500. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Ursa, you know, Fury swipes against the Bristleback, it just bursts him down really, really quickly, so that's a nice thing there. Um, I mean, Ursa just can burst down anyone with the Fury swipes. I just, oh, man. I'm just wondering, and again, I love Titan's draft because I'm a Disruptor player, I'm a Shadow Shaman player, and a Bristle and an Invoker player. <laughs> so, like, you know, they've picked some of my favorite heroes in the game. I'm just wondering. Will the Invoker go Exalt Quas or will he go Quas Swex? Um, for the purposes of this game, I honestly think him going Quas Swex will be effective early to the game. Mm -hmm. But once Ur Ursa picks up a BKB, they're going to have problems anyway. So, you know, yeah. Quas Swex is going to be problematic for them. So I'm just wondering how will they play it? How will it go? I mean, there is a fair amount of lockdown on the Titan team to deal with the Ursa. It's, it's a powerful pickup. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, you want to introduce one of the teams? Yeah, I'll introduce Titan. Um, on Titan, on the Bristleback, we have uh, Ohai. On the Invoker, which is just probably going to go mid, we have KYXY. On the Ember Spirit, we have Standin Mushi. On the Shadow Shaman, we have in Standin Do Belief. And finally, on the Disruptor, we have Titan X. And they're all heading into their jungle, and there might be a team fight there. Yeah, there is. It's complete five on five in the Radiant jungle. Um, I'm not going to introduce the first departure team just yet because they are smoke ganking around behind the Radiant team. There is no way we can get out of this without first blood, as far as I can see. Poor Shadow Shaman. He thinks he's safe. He thinks that all the rest of them are 
he thinks the rest of his team is in danger if anyone. Nightmare goes down on Shadow Shame, broken by Disruptor, just to give him a little bit of space. Sprout goes down on him though. Quilling Blade out. There we go. Now we get M uh, the Brewmaster coming up on the high ground. Drops a bash, manages to get a decent amount of damage down. Now we've got the entire Dire team chasing the Ember Spirit, and it's going to be Mushi giving up first blood. Going straight to the Brewmaster as well. That is exactly what they needed. Um, I seem to be getting a little bit of, of lag here, which is a little bit strange. 305 ping. Um, hmm. Meta, we may need to go to in-game. Yeah, if that's the case, that's not a problem for me. All right. I have open mic, so... So, uh, close the Skype call, and we'll... And we'll turn off mute co-broadcasters. One moment, everybody. I'm sorry for this. I don't want to have lag during the next team fight and then miss anything effective there. Um, yep, still such lag. Quit Skype, go away, I don't want you here. Uh, down on this bottom lane, it seems like we have an aggressive tri lane coming up. We've got Nature's Prophet, Venomancer and Bane all getting ready to gank what so it looks to be a solo Nature's up, Prophet. Um, let's talk about the name phase. We have Mikasa on the Nature's oh, Prophet uh, at the moment with a DD room. Meta hasn't turned off mute code broadcasters. Phasing out the standard Mushi. But there is a struggle in the jungle, so we wonder how that goes. Ooh. Big fight going down here, and Shadow Shaman dies again, and then Bane followed up. Um, so that's one kill each. Two for one, a little bit better, but. Mm. I wonder if Gumball is making it back, but since he's not making it back to do the uh, play by play, I'll hopefully do the play by play from now on. Uh, till he returns, hopefully within the next few seconds. Um, so, in terms of the laning, we can see the Bristle back against the Ursa in the off lane. Ursa being supported by a roaming Bane, it looks like, who's going to be moving around to try and help the team <coughs> as much as he can to get kills. Um, Safe lane Ember, as we expected, who's doing a right for himself, and we see rotations from the support. Having said that, against Nature's Prophet being one kill down already, he might struggle. So, we'll see how it goes. Um. So this is obviously very amusing. Meta hasn't turned off co-broadcasters. Last hits and denies as well. Um, Invoker and Ursa are standing at the top of the last hitting. There we go. The mass messaging works. <laughs> oh, and big action going up on top, but we've got so many... Terrible things going on here with our with our cast that we can't deal with it. Uh, Venomancer gets taken down by Bristleback. They're also chasing uh, Standin. He's looking for a neutral creep deny, and he gets it. Uh, Bristleback now kind of in trouble as well. Yeah, can you hear me, Meta? Okay, we've got some kind of weird problem here. Bristleback desperately trying to get out, but he's not going to. We've got uh, Brewmaster rotating in as well. He's going to try and back up. Maybe try and find a deny on the neutrals like the Shadow Shaman did, but he's not able to, and that's another kill for Bane. So first departure, actually getting. Uh, oh, he had turned it off. That's very strange. Meta will be rejoining us very shortly then. Um, oh, what am I doing? That's not what I meant to do. I do apologize to this, guys. Alright, we have DDFA now taking on this uh, this Bristleback up in top. Now, early game, I'm not entirely sure that that's going to be great for him. Bristleback's great against melees. Um, going to be doing a huge amount of damage if he can start stacking some creeper ass while uh, while Ursa is nearby. Meanwhile, on bot lane, it looks like going to be fairly free farm for the Mushi. Hey, Meadow, can you hear me? What is going on? Here? Wait, Meadow, can you hear me? Meadow? Meadow? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, you can hear me. Oh, great! Hooray! Okay, yes. well, that was weird, but it's done. Now. That, that was, was very strange. That was completely my fault. No, 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 no. It's it's Volvo. It's it's Volvo. Um. So yeah, interesting. So Titan leading the last hits chart quite severely, but such a large kill lead so quickly for first departure. Uh, KS now yeah, coming in. And, and here is the thing. Yeah. You know, Ursa, you, you don't want Ursa to get free farm. That's quite dangerous. And it is. He's saving up for something big. I, do you think he might be going for a Vlad's rush? I mean, they are dire. They've certainly got an opportunity to uh, to take Roshan with a huge amount of ease with Nature's Prophet and Ursa. Oh, and Titan X is going to fall down. 
yeah, Brewmaster is doing a great job here picking up kills. Here's the thing, um, he went to contest the Illusion Rune against Nature's Prophet and he glimpsed Nature's Prophet back but there was too, damage coming, too much damage coming out and the, t the Brewmaster was there as well, so... And it does look like we've got a slow going down on Ohai up on top lane. Ursa uh, so desperately wants to try and get the damage in but he's not going to be able to do it and meanwhile we've got Shadow coming in as a support TP so there's not going to be a huge amount going on up there. Ursa actually not getting all the last hits I thought he'd be able to get. Thought he'd be able to do. I, I'm, I'm not having a go. I'm not having a go. It's better than I would do. Um, and he's certainly doing very, 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 very well on the last hit chart. But you watch it and you kind of think, oh, I, I think I could have got that last hit. Um, so much harass going on in this uh, in the radiant jungle as well. Like Dyer, Nature's Prophet, whoever else are not content to let it be. Meanwhile, he is coming in behind in support of this big push up on top lane, gets immediately shackled. But uh, the stand in Shadow Shaman shackles but doesn't really appreciate it. He's not going to be able to help the Bristleback while that goes on. Mikasa now backs up into lane. The uh, rest of his team desperately trying to take the Creeper ass so that he can survive. Lots of pings coming out on him as uh, as Titan really want to try and make that a kill for, this, for themselves. Um, if I were Nature's Prophet, I would be getting the hell out of dodge while there was still some creeps around to soak up this tower harass. I guess he's waiting for one more nature's call. Sitting there. Yeah, I think he might be able to do it. And they want to take this tower and we don't see massive rotations coming out from Titan. Mm. So it's, it's fair that they do that. And you know, they have the play <sighs> and everything else. This is so tense. I think he's just relying on the fact that people assume he's, he'll TP out. Yeah, he's TPing out as soon as he can. He just he he wanted to do that rather than walk under the tower and risk someone just TPing in and finishing him off. So tense plays, but but very well executed. And we have a Midas coming out on KY X Y. Six minutes is quite a reasonable time. The problem is, is you know, it's effectively gonna delay his ability to do anything for quite mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a double stack for him in the jungle, which is nice. Having said that, you know. I think the key key thing in this game, or at least in the first phase of the early game, it's going to be the Bristleback. Uh, because of his Quill Spray, because it can deal so much damage and cause so much havoc, which we saw. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he got burst down by the air so way, way too quickly for any of that to happen. It's also the fact that, you know, FD have a huge number of individual small points of physical damage which could proc um, more Quill Sprays. Oh, and a huge initiation now on KS. We've got a, a blink in from the uh, fire remnant. Now the nightmare's gone down, but there's a shackle to support, and that's not. There's not going to be anything they can do to to stop that. I do think actually. Oh no, no mana for no mana for the ult. And in answer to your earlier question, it's very definitely a quasi exalt invoker. I kind of thought they got quasiwex as well for the team fight, for the setup. Yeah. Oh. I mean, uh, they they need a bit of damage, which I can understand, and you know. Exalt and Volker does give them that, it does give them the, the great amount of damage, some strikes and all, but your damage late game is going to come out from the Ember, so why not get the early game security by having a class West Invoker, mm -hmm. and then hope that you can farm the Ember quickly enough for for that, you know, for the Ember to come online, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but Titan's rotations, Titan's gameplay, their TP's out in dangerous situations, it's working to their advantage. They are quite behind in terms of the kill but you know that's 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 not a big thing that can change quite easily i mean looking at the graph um titan have 2000 more XP. oh and they're going on bristle back up on top oh hi tp straight into a mad ursa there's a sprout as well but he does have a quilling blade they're going to back off and leave it they know there's a tp coming in and support Men multiple tps in fact ursa almost managing to get it out but there's a shadow shaman coming in with shackles Ember Spirit trying to come in and finish off the kill as well. Manages to get it before Ohai falls. Yeah. Meanwhile on mid I though... Got greedy there. She was like, I can... Well meanwhile on mid, the, the space created. That's in, that's uh, that's Invoker going down. And as you said, he's actually did, probably been doing the best. I think that's actually a, another trade in favour of First Departure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are winning these trades, even though I mean the Ursa did get greedy there. Um, but yeah, um, against an Invoker... You, you're delaying his farm, you're delaying the item set that he can get. Um, and, you know, Mushi just standing there defending that tower, doing a good job, mm -hmm. not letting them get another tower, um, which is great.
I'm just thinking, I mean, I just feel that if, if KYXY had gone for, uh, Oh, and they do scout out the Ember, the, uh, the Ursa doing Roche. He's actually really quite low. If they keep mashing these Sun Strikes on him, I always find it hard to judge Ursa Roches. But we do have a Smoke Gang coming in. There goes the Remnant. Gets the Shackles down on Bane. There's a lot of damage there. And the Static Field. That's going to be a one very, very dead Ursa. Bane managing to make it out on the sidelines. But Glimpse back in and finished off as well. That's the kind of thing Titan need. They may even try and contest his Roche. I don't think they'll be, I mean there's no point in trying to take him, you have uh, Venno as well as Brew alive and mm -hmm. you know, Roshan's quite healthy, you know, I mean he did take a bit of damage but you know, he's a big guy. Not he a huge amount. Mm. Uh, they did leave a remnant in there though, it's almost entirely hidden by Roche, I'm not sure, not sure whether that's deliberate, but yeah, and I think it was a very good call. Ember's now got a, uh, also a free way to deny himself I suppose, if he ever gets really low he just nips to that remnant. If he doesn't have any better ones to go to, he gets denied by Roche. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just wondering, it looks like First Departure really want that Roche. Well, I mean, they do have Ursa, Nature's Prophet, and Venno. If they get just a little bit of space, they will take it. Yeah. And oh, and this sentry. Look at that sentry near Bot Rune. See how close it is to that Ursa's Observer Ward. Yeah. Yeah, and Disruptor Ping, he was saying there's someone in the jungle, someone did something. Ursa's uh, gone back in to have another go. I cannot for your Ember Spirit. Oh, but there it is, no, big initiation on Mushi. Just absolutely wrecked. I think maybe FD were more baiting there than anything else. They were ready to jump out of that the second something went down. And now X looking incredibly low, totally creep blocked here. Um, there's just so many minions on the first departure side. KS possibly getting a little bit too far ahead though, he does not have mana for it. Oh, his ult's already been popped apart from anything else. And now the entire Titan team know exactly who their target is. They want this Brewmaster, they're not going to get him though, he does have blink. And the, uh, and the Roshan goes down, oh hi, caught out. Ursa does have the Aegis, he's caught by Shackle though, they're able to finish off Nature's Prophet. And, you know, Ursa's gonna be going down here basically for free. To the remnant. KS comes in, gets one brief, very very brief slam down. And Ursa's gonna be finished off again, so that's a wasted Aegis for them. Meanwhile Brewmaster, caught in the Static Storm, absolutely destroyed. And now Venomancer as well, why are First Departure doing this? They need to get back! They don't have a huge amount of time. Bane nightmares himself, so that's delayed the inevitable, but it certainly hasn't prevented anything. Nature's Prophet is back up now. Bane gets caught in the static field, but Titan don't know because he'd managed to reach the high ground. They thought he got through. That was a free kill for them that they just left, but they certainly came out of that ahead. Managing to even out the kills after such a decisive lead early. Man, what do you think of that? And you know, that was absolutely amazing, and you saw Nature's Prophet being glimpsed back into the fountain when he managed to do a TP. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, first departure with... Oh, but they did manage to catch out the Disruptor on the way out. He does glimpse the person back, though, <laughs> which is his job. <laughs> um, Most fun. Though, he got caught out, but, yeah. Um, I think, you know, first departure, they knew that you were trying for this rush attempt. They shouldn't have gone for it. Leave it for a little by, try to push another tower or something, distract them, spread them out, and mm -hmm. then go for the rush again. They didn't need to have the level of immediacy that they did to grab that, that rush on. Mm. And they paid for it. I mean, I, I'm not sure whether they were trying to go for it hard or trying to bait out a fight, but given the fact that the Ursa was actually just waiting in the pit for most of the time, they probably, you're right, were just yeah, trying to fight I mean, it. Ursa, Ursa clearly clearly was just ignoring the team fight and was just trying to take approaches swiftly and Ursa in a way kind of Nature's Prophet comes in, they've caught out Disruptor again but I don't know if it, that was worth split to be perfectly honest um, they have caught out the Invoker they're rushing on him, they'll have another stun coming off the Earth Spirit there it is he's stunned but the rest of the team aren't there, they've got to make this trade though they've already lost a tier 1 on bot so if they don't come out of this with some kind of profit, oh, and now we've got TPs coming in from Ember Spirit. He's ready. They're going for the Nature's Profit. Mikasa in real trouble here. 
two core melees. Meanwhile, uh, Fiend's Grip goes down on Invoker, manages to finish him off. Now we've got Ursa looking angry. It's not just Fuzzy Wuzzy. There goes the Venomancer roll. They need a little bit more damage on Ohai, though, if they're going to kill him. Oh, wow, and KS in so deep. I don't know whether he thought his team were coming or whether he was trying to buy them some time. Kai possibly in trouble, glimpsed. There's a nightmare. And it's a good way to delay the enemy team a little bit, but it's it's not going to save your life. Uh, Venomancer caught out in the trees here doesn't well does not have a TP on him, and that was a that was an awful trade for first departure. They lost two towers, didn't take one, and came out of the team fight worse off. Titan are definitely exercising control in this game. The XP and gold graph, yeah, just huge. Yeah, I mean even when they were behind on kills, they still had more XP and more net worth than first departure. The whole point of first departure is the ability to take towers very very quickly and that's what's guaranteed them their farm and that's what's given them their kind of advantage. Mm -hmm. Having said that, looking at the towers, they've only managed to get the offlane tower. Yeah. And you know, 15 minutes in, which is not what their team was designed to do. Their team was designed to take like at least three towers 15 minutes in and you know the top tower did get denied as well so and the middle tower invoker just with a beautiful and deny um, that was very good and that's a lot of gold that they're losing that's a lot of gold that they're losing so mm. invis brewmaster wants to go on this mid pack but it looks like uh his team aren't quite so sure but there is an initiation venomenta actually getting caught out here's the brew there's a split they're gonna get disruptor again but they cannot keep using split to catch disruptor they've got a chance to get bristle back as well where's the stun where's there's the stun where's the team invoker is uh, thrown up into the air and they're out and also you know bristleback does have the mech on him at this stage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so he's incredibly hard to kill he also is carried a, a chainmail he has so much armor he's mm. he's just not gonna die Meanwhile, big fight going on up on top. Mushi caught out. First departure actually able to finish them off despite Ursa being incredibly low. So well played to them there. Meanwhile, down on bot lane, we have Nature's Prophet versus uh, Nature's Prophet versus Bristleback. Blade Mail is popped. Ohai has to be a little bit more cautious here, taking a lot of creeper ass. I think when he turned around, then Mikasa actually had a chance to right click him. But Quill Spray does have a huge range, so maybe not. Many, many wards on mid lane. All kinds of wards. Yeah, I think first departure on making a few mistakes with the idea of, you know, trying to take or do that rich on fight, which mm -hmm. has cost them. I mean, they were already playing from behind in the sense that they, um, Titan had a better gold advantage network and mm -hmm. a better XP advantage. And then you, you lose a team fight like that and they have fallen, I mean not too massively, they're about 2,500 uh, in net worth and 2,500 in XP. Mm -hmm. So it's not that massive, but that's a kind of advantage that Titan need to be able to grab the farm and Nushka to be able to grab the right items, the damage items that they need to take them. Big push coming out on yeah, top here from Titan. With they're looking to take a couple of these tier ones. It's effectively free gold if they're winning the team fights. Yeah, they're, they're baiting with Mushi at the moment. Yeah, but the engagement actually happens behind the tower as Split goes down. Kai is caught out in the disruptor ult. The Split goes down as well, though, and I think they might have a good chance here to maybe take the fight if they can cut down at least this bristle back. There goes the Fiend's grip. And that will be a dead bristle. Now they're trying to get on Mushi, but they're not going to be able to catch him. He's going to be able to remnant away. Can Bane get a nightmare? No, he cannot. Meanwhile, behind, they're chasing the uh, Invoker. Ice Wall goes down. Three for one. That was very well played from first departure. Nature's Prophet's still chasing Mushi. Manages to get one right click off, but they're not going to be quick enough here to catch him. And if he keeps going, he's going to run into the Invoker coming up from behind. Incredibly risky push here. 
frostbitten, glimpsed back, and finished off. Way over aggressive there from Mikasa. Just given where the rest of the team would be rotating in from, it, I think that was a fairly predictable rotation from Invoker. Yeah, I mean, they've done really well. They've protected uh, their position one from Mushi, and they grabbed the kill on Nature's Prophet, which is really, really smart. Um, compared, Nature's Prophet compared this game to where he was last game at the stage, is a huge, huge difference. Mm. I believe uh, at this stage in the last game, he already also had his Orchid. So, you know, as I was saying, not getting that tower goal, that early tower goal, which is their team designed to do, leaves them at a disadvantage. Um, mm -hmm. Even though Titan are three kills, to, three kills behind, it's quite insignificant considering the mechanics of the game. Yeah, I mean, those were three kills. Whoa, Invoker managing to finish off Ursa, though. That's a very significant kill. That's a very significant kill. But, you know, it, it, those were... Well, two now early game kills that gave him that lead, and it just doesn't mean enough, right? Um, I think Roche will be up soon as well. Should I have about a minute and a half? Oh, more like a minute. We're getting close. Um, Invoker possibly being a little bit too far forward. Dianos is here, they've also got a ward up to spy out his escape. Brew not. Oh, does have his blink. Full staff on the way as well. 500 gold or so. Actually looks like uh, Titan wants to kind of rotate on him though. There's a lift going down all of the Invoker spells and it's going to be enough. Such nuke. We do have Nature's Prophet coming in from behind though, followed up by uh, followed up by the Disruptor ult. Unfortunately for, uh, for Nature's Prophet, Bristleboss has also got his blade mail. Uh, Nature's Prophet glimpsed back right into the thick of things. Going to be finished off by Ohai, I think. Quill Spray does, gets a kill. There is a Venom ult down though, so Ohai can't afford to take much more harass. Oh, and again, the uh, nice static field does manage to catch out Bane, but again, Titan not in a position to uh, to push on it. Meanwhile, on bot lane, Ward's dropped on the tier 3. Mushi desperately trying to get some damage in on these, and doing a great job of it as well. Manages to get the, the shackles down on the Ursa. That will hold him up from clearing out those wards, and that's half of a tier 3 down. I'm beginning to wonder whether that whole push top was just a bluff. It was a big bluff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, the beauty about Titan is they're finding the space to farm out Mushi, they're finding the space to farm out Shadow Shaman, and, you know, they're forcing uh, First Departure to, to rotate to the same place, to be in the same place, which is losing them a lot of XP and mm. a lot of farm. Um, and, you know, it kind of spiraled down once they failed at that um, rush attempt, and, I'm, you know, they need this rush, I think, on the Earth. Uh, so to be able to make a huge difference, but it's already been scouted out. Mm. They know what's going on. The Titan know what's going on, and they won't let them have it. Mm. Mid tier one goes down. That's one of the best avenues for uh, for first of all to try and get into Roshan. And again, Brewmaster just nuked down by this Invoker combo. Again, with the support of the team, but I can't help feeling that that Invoker is doing most of the work here. Uh, beautiful play by KYXY. Yeah, I mean, and I think they're just looking to get this last tower down, then go Rosh. Yep. I mean, this, this Exalt Invoker is making a huge, huge difference. He's giving them a lot of damage when it comes to the mid game. And, you know, I criticised him for going Exalt sort of considering they have Mushu, but he's doing brilliantly. And, you know, mm -hmm. his damage will only get better and better as the game continues. You know, this Roshan is going down fairly quickly as well, isn't it? It's a Forge Spirit. The anti armor on them is just such a big. Such a big factor. In fact, they've got numerous points of anti armor there. Um, oh, and Venomancer gets caught out. There's going to be a glimpse back into that static field, I think. Oh, they get it slightly wrong, but Bristleback with the blocks. Ursa comes in, smash hits, uh, hit, hit Mushi, I think, but now hit by Shackle. And the wards. He just tears through Shadow Shaman the minute he's let out, though. Does take enough damage from them to go down. Mikasa desperately trying to finish off the uh, Bristleback. He's now chasing Bane. Nightmare goes down. The spirits desperately trying to catch out Mushi, and they get him. Two for three. All right, how many kills did I say there would be at 30 minutes? 50. So we're four off. I think we're gonna get it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna yeah, get it. it. Looks like it. Looks like it's one of those games. 
Yeah, Titan are making all the right decisions in this game. Their positioning has been immaculate. Um, and, you know, they're winning. So that's all there is to it, basically. Mm. Uh, oh. A big part of it is first. KYXY is going to go on the Brewmaster again. Yules. All the combos. Split is down for 70 seconds. Nightmare's going to save him. But there will be another Sun Strike somewhere along the path. I have no doubt of that. And, you know, as I was saying, that disruptor is forcing the Brewmaster to come in and ult, rather than Brewmaster coming in, doing some damage, and then ulting when he's on low health. Where's the Sun Strike? Which is changing the dynamic of the team fight. Where's the Sun Strike, KYXY? You had a chance! I'm quite surprised at that, actually. I thought Invokers loved doing that. <laughs> seriously, seriously like maybe it's maybe it's too much of a pub thing. It's okay. He's he's already he's he's already proved that he can do it. He doesn't need to do it again. <laughs> Pretty cavalier. Um Nature's Prophet possibly in a little bit of trouble, man, just to get a nice neat TP out. Um Shadow Shaman. I'm gonna have another look at these such weird treants. I'm sorry, I know there's stuff going on, but what? They're, they're really cool treants. The hell? They don't look like treants. They look like, I don't know, some kind of weird troll. Anyway, that's Mini not what's important centaurs. here. Mini tree centaurs, that's what they look like. <laughs> they really do. I don't know what they are, I guess. They're hexapedal. Hexapedal? Whichever. It's like a half a sheep, half a tree had a baby. We've got Brewmaster ready to blink in on this top tower push, but I don't think his team are going to be here fast enough. They need to be here significantly faster than that. There we go, the tower's down. They'd be better off not to do this in that case. Um, we've got the stun coming out. Invis on the air spirit. He's looking to try and catch uh, somebody out in a tornado. Gets a Shadow Salmon. Oh, hi now. Runs straight through the, the static field put down to protect his team's retreat. And uh, yeah, as predicted, they probably would have been better not to go into this. They went in too slow, the tower was already down, that will be a dead Venomancer. All they managed to do there really was yeah. waste. Um, waste yeah, split. Titan can push now, because, yeah, Titan can push now, because BKBs are down, uh, Brewmaster ulti is down, uh, Bristleback will heal up in a second, and they have Mech coming up in 10 seconds. Mm. So, you know. Here we go. Wards dropped on top lane. Brewmaster's here to defend. Nature's Prophet desperately trying to push out bot. We've got Ursa desperately trying to push out mid. I guess they're going to try and at least get some presence, maybe force back some TPs before they try and defend this. But I'm hoping we're going to see mass teleports back. Otherwise, we're going to lose racks here. Mushi actually being brought very, very low by Nature's Prophet. If, they, if he'd had a Mjolnir the proc on that last one, that would have been a kill. But no, he gets taken out himself by the awesome power of sleight of fist so now with Rax down it's a 4v5 fight up at the uh, up at the dire base blink in from blue master tornado from uh, tornado and then followed up by glimpse ohai being brought very very low by uh, by the ursa ember spirit in the fight now shadow shaman blinking in gets a nice hex all they need now is a little bit more damage they'll have ursa they'll have veno They've already got the Veno. Ohai is finally brought down. There's a gem just sitting there, picked up, I think, by the Shadow. Yeah, picked up by the Shadow Shaman. Brewmaster glimpsed back in. Just had time on split. The cooldown is off. This is their chance now. Finishes off two heroes right off the bat. Mushi going to be able to get out. Invoker comes back with the with the Aegis. And uh, yeah, they're actually chasing. This is risky. They do, man they do manage to get a tornado off. We do have a blink in from the uh, Nature's Prophet. The gem is recovered by Mushi though, and there's so many treants there for him to slight a fist off. All of them doing extra cleave damage from the Battle Fury. Invoker finishing off both kills though with just amazing AoE damage. Wow. So Rax for a tier 2. And another lost team fight. Or, I don't know, was that one team fight, two team fights, or three team fights? Whatever it was, it was lost by first departure. 
Yeah. Um, first departure had a great, great lineup to do what they wanted to do, but they managed to fail secure the first rush because they got scouted out. Second mm-hmm. rush went to Titan, and you know they've been playing from behind ever since, and their lineup wasn't designed to hold up for this long. Wasn't designed to hold up to basically a farmed invoker and a farmed mm-hmm. ember spirit. And because of that they are they are basically paying for it. Mm, absolutely. And it's difficult. Invoker and uh and Ember Spirit both operate in such different ways. You know, what do you build to counter the enemy damage? Do you build a BKB to deal with Invoker? You know, that's great, but it's not gonna help you too much against Ember Spirit. Do you build an ethereal blade to deal with the Ember Spirit? That's fine, but it's certainly not going to help you against the Invoker. The Invoker, yeah. And, you know, it's it's great gameplay, it's great control of it's coming out of Titan. Um, as I was mentioning in the draft, Shadow Shaman being able to push towers, Disruptor giving them the AoE control, uh, and then you have uh, Ember and Invoker for the damage, and Bristleback is just running around going, Do you really want to attack me? Mm. Do you really want to be. Caught? Oh, and Lubby is caught out by Ghostwalked Invoker. The combo goes down. Nightmare, though, to save. I think they might want to just get out of here. Kai needs to get back. Here comes the Brew with the blink. Split. Venerol is down just before he dies. Ohai with Blade Mail up. Desperately trying to finish off here. He manages to get the Nature's Prophet. This Brewmaster trying to get some kind of foothold for his team to fight here. Gradually getting it down as the Invoker falls. And uh, Titan actually on the run, but they're mainly just waiting for that Brew Ult to come off cooldown, which it will in just a second. There's a Dunk. There's so much damage coming out from this Brew, but it's not going to be enough. Ohai is still in this fight. I think that must have been his second Blade Mail pop. Shackles goes down on Brewmaster. And GG, called by Mikasa. Kai finished off as well, and that's a 5 for nothing team wipe. First departure, calling GG off the back of that. Which I think is fair. <sighs> Thoughts, Metamorphosis. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, this is this is this was a great, great game, and you know, we saw first departure do what they did in the first game very, very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we saw Titan counter it massively, and, the, and their picks and their draft, uh, you know, was was a great, great draft. I love Titan's draft in this game. And I felt that they had an advantage, and they executed it perfectly. Mm-hmm. That's that's all I'm going to say. Mm. Uh, it's a, it's a very very good point. I mean, I honestly thought that uh, first departure could have had it there. They seemed right at the beginning to have the kind of momentum they needed. Um, and certainly, Titan a little bit more dependent on farm. I think, as you said, it's even things like Bristle's Vanguard or uh, the Mech and Blade Mail, as he ended up going, made so much of a difference. Um, but well played to both teams. Um, I think one one is fair as an ending for that two game series. I honestly think 1-1 is probably fair. Um, anybody watching on Steam, uh, on the stream rather, please do follow, subscribe, really helps me do what I'm doing and you'll also get, if assuming I'm still casting, a little pop-up like this. Woo! I'm so proud of that because it took me ages to do. Um, but yeah, many thanks to Meta as well for joining me. This was a bit last minute for him, I admit. And uh, yeah, Many thanks and tune in next time, I guess. Well, thank you. Have, have, have a lovely day as well. Yeah. And GG's to everyone at home. Ciao.